Welcome everybody to our talking and exploring Old Oak and Park Royal walks. We are at East Acton Station and that's one of seven stations which have the name Acton in them. So look at uh, the nice architecture. It's really pleasant and you know when they built they thought of the human scale of the buildings. And also about the prison that Duquesne Road along here is named after the one who designed, who kind of uh, was in charge for putting up this prison and it was built with inmates labor. So they built the first block and then they were adding to it. And it is quite interesting architecturally, so if you travel by Central Line, you can see the, the front gate. common was a huge ground and that's the only stretch that is left. Of course you can see lots of like football grounds, sports grounds. So that's North Acton by the station and the two tallest ones, the taller uh, is going to be 55. They are growing in the plants like from 30 something to 40 something and at the moment they are for the plan is for 55. earlier on when I was cycling this the, there were still uh, so there was uh, this was not yet fenced off and there were still these little like uh, roofs and tables for people to to mm -hmm. have their meals there mm -hmm. so this is gone very recently this just shows the the changes and also this part of the scraps is quite uh, kind of uh, muddy and they put some kind of concrete or something for heavy vehicles so it, when you walk on this, it's not country, it's some, something else, like rubber, kind of you, you sink in the, in the, in the mud. This is the back of the triangular road called Wells House Road. And Wells Springs were uh, springs with really nice healing water. And in the 18th century, people were, rich people were advised for medicinal reasons to come and take waters here. So there were assembly rooms and it was all very nice. I started when I was 15, 14, and still working. What we can do here? Different rules from different countries, Persian, Pakistan, Turkey, and for, because we have, this is for example, Persian Harris, Northwest Persia, and we are using Harris rules on it. Afshar rug, silk rug. So that's made of silk? This is silk, yeah, Turkish mm. and and, uh, yeah, we have some antique vintage 
new production, not too much new production, usually I'm working on it. Mm -hmm. And uh, you do a lot of repairing. Yeah, I'm repairing here. So can somebody come to you uh, to get their uh, carpet repaired? Yes, some people give me, for example here, it's had the mouse damage. I knot it there, I think the knot. Then for example here, it's repiling, it's warm. Oh, yeah. It's not repiling, it's going to become like this. Mm. Good foundation. Um, yeah, like this. And any carpet I can repair if you have antique, new, vintage, other matter. And also we are washing and cleaning here. Actually, the washing factory is in Oxford. This one I finish next week. End of next week. Uh, I think yeah, end of next week. We have just I fix it this part. That's what I have there. So how much did that cost you? So this. I don't know. I will say later. Uh, <laughs> That's private. Uh, yeah, I don't want to say. Oh, thank you so much. So I'm Joanna and I'm. And you? And you? I'm Hatch. Pleasure, Hatch. But look at the amazing things here. Yeah, that one is Afghan. Yes, some kind of different patterns. Yes. Yeah? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is it old? It is old. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, you see uh, all these from Persian, actually, these Iranian handmade uh, carpets. We have some antiques, modern, and vintage. So, some people actually like, you know, antiques, some people modern, some people it depends. So, we have all type of rocks here. Yeah, if you need you more than welcome anytime. <laughs> One is, uh, that one is uh, Persian, is about 1920, is almost 100 years old. It's a kilim, yeah, that one is Kashkai, very mm -hmm. popular kilim. Now these days it's become more collector pieces. Yeah, if you look at the design and the pattern, is a tribal nomads from mm. yeah, Kashkai area, you see in the Shiraz. The, this design just comes from that area, so it belongs to that people, that nomads. You see here all type of rocks, you know, mm -hmm. handmade, different colors, different designs. And that so, one? That one is again from Persia, it's from Tabriz area. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If you look at here, sorry, just... This is, each of these is not. So each of these, they weave it, one by one. So imagine how long it takes, you know, to finish this. <laughs> But day by day, those uh, actually weavers, uh, you know, the uh, production coming down because new generation, they are not interested to sit and just weave yes. the rocks. Mm -hmm. So How many people for how many days? So take? probably this one in this size, uh, two people takes around nine months. Two people, nine yeah. months. But some, you know, like this, these are modern, it's a new carpet. We make it in, yeah, again in Tabriz area in Iran. But these are sort of factory made, so we give the design, pattern and the color. But the vintage one, the antique one, no. They made, you know, for themselves and then, you know, in the market. The reason why Persian carpet is, you know, the quality of them is better because the sheep uh, actually uh, we have in northwest of Iran, they have got very soft food because of their nature, you know what I mean. So, uh, mostly uh, for good carpets, they use from that food. And the dyes of those becomes nicely and also, you know, they, they dye it naturally actually from vegetables, yeah. When they're making this, are they looking at a design or a drawing, or do they do it from memory? No, they do it most of you know. You know uh, now they doing they looking to the actually drawing, but these uh, mostly they make with their mind actually. Mm. Yeah, people in that area, you know, when they start to make the carpet, so they learn. You know what I mean? So mm. you know, it's, a, it's sort of uh, my family business, a generation. Yeah, mm -hmm. so. I started in Iran, mm -hmm. and still, you know, I've got a family over there, so we have got production. 
So we bring the carpet here and then uh, we selling here. Persian carpet, in, you, as, like most of the people, they put their money as an investment as well. Today there was one Persian carpet in one of the antique auction in Bamburi is made uh, 20,000 pounds. They had damage as well. Also you enjoy with the pattern, you use it, then it's a sort of investment as well. Antique one, the price of antique one is higher. So this Iranian carpet day by day they're going off the price. The production is coming down, but the price is going up. But modern, you know, recently in most new carpets, you see they are not wool. They call probably, you know, wool, but it's not wool. So that's why I suggest you, if you want to buy a carpet, buy Persian carpet. Yeah, enjoy it. All they have got is story, the colors, all. And also these days you can Google it and you can study about that. Then is you know, is uh, amazing, you know, if you look at the history of the Persian carpet. I, I really think we should support him. He makes really lovely stuff, both yeah. baklava and the, the, you know, like celebration cakes and the um, French, you know, style cakes, etc. I can see the fridge here. Mr. Mustafa, can we ask you for some cards? Ah! <laughs> Where is one for me? Thank you. I will finish that one. that thing about urban living where you go out and there's all these little bits I saw some of you earlier taking photographs all these little bits and textures and things that you pick up but when you go out into the countryside as well you have that feeling of openness and fresh air and space and all of that kind of thing that's what I'm trying to match it's always a bit of a kind of hybrid mashup so this is one of ten I've been doing at this size and I've got some bigger ones as well and uh, usually I work on wood board but I've been back to canvas because when you get really big, wood panels get really heavy to work around on your own. So I've been back working on canvas, but the texture is very different. So I've been doing a lot of really using the fluid paint in different areas and leaving it to dry and building up layers with these very thin layers of fluid paint because you get a really nice translucency that way. So yeah, and then I come out here and check halfway through, decide whether I think it's finished. <laughs> <laughs> 